Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here. Once again to tantalise your taste for knowledge with a little bit of history on an often overlooked platform. In the early part of the 90s, the global games console market was dominated by a two horse war between the likes of Nintendo and Sega. The two companies were battling out putting out platforms such as the NES, the Mega Drive, the Game Boy and Game Gear, just to name a few. Whilst this battle for supremacy was not successfully challenged across the world on many occasions, in Japan, on the other hand, we got a slightly different story. The NEC PC Engine often ranked the second most popular system there, putting Sega at third place in the region as opposed to first and second spot it held across many other territories over the 90s. At its time of release, the PC Engine was a very impressive piece of hardware, displaying graphics and more colours than any console in the world at the time, so NEC deserved all of the success they had over this time frame. Even more impressively, NEC even released a handheld version of the system known as the PC Engine GT, which was the Rolls Royce of handheld gaming for a long time. If you would like to learn more about either of these devices, I have uploaded in-depth retrospectives covering both of these systems right here on this channel, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and check them out after you have watched this video. Today we are going to be covering the PCFX, which was NEC's games console which saw release during the fifth generation of gaming. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the PCFX. Yeah. When it comes to the mid 90s and the fifth generation of gaming, the Sony PlayStation was the undisputed king of the consoles. Sony popped up on the scene and took the throne away from Nintendo and Sega, who had been in a constant battle for supremacy at the top of the mountain throughout the 16-bit era. The next generation was a different story altogether though, as neither company could compete with the marketing prowess Sony were presenting throughout this period. Sure, the Nintendo 64 and the Sega Saturn both made impacts in their own rights but neither platform reached the level of success that either company had intended to. These three systems are just the tip of the iceberg though when it comes to this era of gaming. There were many other powerful systems that entered the fray too, much of which are remembered today as little more than memes. We had the real 3DO, the Philips CDI, the Apple Pippin, the Amiga CD32, the Atari Jaguar, the FM Towns Marty, just to name a few of these beasts. With NEC though, and their recent, very successful run in Japan, you would perhaps have tipped them to have some level of success with their fifth generation instalment. So let's look at exactly what went down with this platform. The NEC PCFX saw a release in the Japanese market in December of 1994. The new system reached the market just one week after the Sony PlayStation and about a month after the Saturn. Whilst previously the PC Engine saw a release as the Turbo Graphics in North America and Europe, the PCFX on the other hand permanently remained exclusive to the Japanese market as no Western releases ever materialised. The case for the console itself had somewhat of a unique form factor in that it was shaped like a PC tower as opposed to the more traditional games console look. The reason for this is stated was that like a PC tower, at one point in time, it was set to be upgradable. The PCFX with its 32-bit system architecture was named Tetsujin or Iron Man. This technology was developed in-house by NEC themselves. This was shown off at a large number of different trade shows throughout 1992. By the summer of that year, imminent release for the technology was being discussed with many different third-party developers being touted. As discussed previously, the PC Engine was a massive deal in Japan and was still very popular in 1992, 
Early opinions on the Iron Man technology was rather mixed though. A lot of this was down to many people in the region being completely uninterested in the possibility of switching to new hardware. PC engine owners were not craving a more powerful system as the old hardware was already doing a perfect job of satisfying user needs. So instead of pushing for a 1992 or 1993 release on the PCFX, NEC simply chose to offer consumers of their products system add-ons and modifications for their PC engines instead. Whilst getting the most out of the PC engine at the time seemed to be the right thing for NEC to do in terms of actual consumer demand, NEC seemed to have grown lazy when looking towards the future. The PCFX launch was finally announced at the end of 1993 and, as mentioned previously, launched alongside the Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation in 1994. The big problem at this point though was that for some reason at the time of release, the PCFX specs remained relatively unchanged from the original Iron Man architecture from back in 1992. The only real difference present was the addition of the new 32-bit V810 RISC CPU. So all in all, sending out this dated hardware to compete with the likes of the PlayStation was a foolish mistake for NEC. One magazine source at the time would review the PCFX on release and give it a score of only 18 out of 40. Lacking in system capabilities in comparison to both the PlayStation and Saturn, the PCFX did not even feature a Polygon graphics processor, which was arguably the most important feature when it came to 5th generation games consoles. It is stated that NEC opted to make this decision at the time as all Polygon processors were low powered and only allowed games to be developed featuring blocky graphics so decided that if games were to feature polygons, they should all be pre-rendered instead. In many ways, much like Sega of Japan, NEC couldn't really see the merit of pushing polygon gaming when games of this archetype were simply so ugly and basic at the time. Instead, NEC were more focused on pushing the growth of 2D gaming capabilities. Further on from this, the PCFX featured the ability to decompress 30 JPEG pictures per second, while simultaneously playing digital recorded audio, all in all meaning that the PCFX was the most powerful platform on the market when it came to the ability to display in full motion videos, and no system of that generation surpassed the PCFX in that regard. Marketing wise, the bold plan for the PCFX was for NEC to target audiences who were 5 years older than the average PC Engine owner. This was done in an attempt to expand their audience whilst hoping that PC Engine owners by this point would already be familiar with the company's products and would naturally want to upgrade their hardware anyway. Apparently a global release for the PCFX was ruled out very early on partly on the basis that NEC did not believe that Westerners particularly were interested in expensive consoles, especially if they did not feature additional non-gaming uses. But let's be honest, after the lacklustre performance of the Turbo Graphics and the demand for the PlayStation in the West, it is obvious that PCFX would have not stood a chance to begin with. In regards to NEC's sole focus on just Japan, NEC ordered Hudson Soft to only develop games based on well-known anime franchises for the system, all of which used pre-rendered animated footage. Whilst this obviously played to the system's full motion video strengths, this sadly foolishly stopped Hudson bringing their very successful PC Engine IPs to the platform, such as Bonk and Bomberman for example. Ultimately, after this series of clearly poorly executed moves by NEC, the PC effect was completely discontinued by 1998, selling a pitiful 400,000 units over a space of four years. During this time frame, only 62 games saw a release on the platform, with the final game seeing release in April of 1998. If you fancy importing one of these devices today, fortunately the PCFX features no copy protection, so you can experience all of these now defunct games for free. 
In regards to these games, like the FM Towns Marty, which we covered previously on this channel, many of these titles are apparently weird adult-only Japanese hentai games, arguably making this system well suited for perverts and admirers of my video thumbnails. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the sad little story of the PCFX. Let me know in the comment section if you would like to see me produce a video on the system's games in the future. Also, which systems would you like me to cover in detail on this channel soon? Do not forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss one of my videos. Finally, my channel Top Pack Gaming Man is funded by the fantastic support I receive from my amazing Patreon benefactors. I will always be here as long as you are here. So shout outs to Carl Johnson, Shizuka Kobayashi, Greg Hooper, Lawrence C, Since Spaces, Kevin Fahaley, Andrew Bozanski, Edward O'Reilly, Tom Elliott, Mark S. Hines, The Gaming Muso, Quang DX, Sponge Matt B, JD Robbins, Michael Baker, Andy Aldridge and all of my other patrons. Thank you all for changing my life. Cheerio.